There was a Jesuit priest who was an insider at the Vatican to the highest degree, an advisor to multiple popes and high up cardinals. To him was revealed the deepest, darkest secrets of the Vatican that he made known to the public. He was also a Jesuit priest of the secret society of Jesus. And to him was also revealed the third secret of Fatima that was never released to the public. This is Malachi Martin, and I'll get into all those subjects in this video. Malachi Martin was a scholar, a Vatican insider, an exorcist, and a best-selling author who said anybody who is acquainted with the state of affairs in the Vatican in the last 35 years is well aware that the Prince of Darkness has had and still has his surrogates in the court of St. Peter in Rome. From 1958 until 1964, Jesuit priest Malachi Martin served in Rome, where he was a close associate and carried out many sensitive missions for the renowned Jesuit Cardinal Augustine Bay and the Pope. He was later released from his Jesuit vows of poverty and obedience at his own request, but still remained a priest. He later moved to New York and became a best-selling writer of fiction and non-fiction and continued his priestly duties as well as exorcisms. The absolute evil corruption that Malachi Martin exposed in the highest levels of the Vatican can first be referenced by Pope Paul VI in 1972, in which he said on June 29th, we would say that through some mysterious crack, no, it's not mysterious, through some crack, the smoke of Satan has entered the Church of God. Malachi Martin later references this in his 1990 book, Keys of This Blood, in which an evil satanic act and rite took place within the highest levels of the Vatican. In that book, on page 632, it says, Most frighteningly for Pope John Paul II, he had come up against the irremovable presence of a malign strength in his own Vatican and in certain bishops' chanceries. It was what knowledgeable churchmen called the super force, rumors always difficult to verify tied to its installation to the beginning of Pope Paul VI's reign in 1963. Indeed, Paul had alluded somberly to the smoke of Satan which has entered the sanctuary, an oblique reference to an enthronement ceremony by Satanists in the Vatican. Besides, the incidence of satanic <laughs> rites and practices was already documented among certain bishops and priests as widely dispersed as Turin in Italy and South Carolina in the United States. The cultic acts of satanic <laughs> are considered by professionals to be the culmination of the fallen archangel's rites. That is a non-fictional book with actual statements of truth claimed by Malachi Martin, and in his fictional books he says about 85% of what he talks about is actually the truth. In one of his last works, Windswept House, a Vatican novel in 1996, in this story, he vividly described a ceremony called the enthronement of the fallen archangel Lucifer, supposedly held in St. Paul's Chapel in the Vatican. This is in reference to that evil rite that took place, the growing super force within the Vatican of evil bishops and cardinals and people in the Vatican who were actually satanic and serving Satan rather than God. According to the New American, when Malachi Martin was interviewed by them, he confirmed that the ceremony did indeed occur as he had described. Quote, oh yes, it is very true, very much so, but the only way I could have put that down into print is in a novelistic form. On a radio program, Steel to Steel, Malachi Martin was asked point blank, did that enthronement ceremony of the fallen archangel Lucifer take place at the Vatican? And Malachi Martin responded, yes, it did. Similarly, on June 1st, 1978, Veronica Lucan had an apparition and a word, supposedly a prophecy from Mary, where something very similar was told to her years before Malachi Martin even publicly came out with this, and that said, quote, but my children, as I said in the past, I repeat again, that Satan and his agents, the band of 666, has entered into the highest places of the hierarchy, and therefore he has captured some of our formerly noble hierarchy to do his bidding. Another insight was given to Veronica Lucan in something in reference that was tied to Malachi Martin as well, which was about the third secret of Fatima, which was actually revealed to Malachi Martin. But before I get into that, Malachi Martin was a Jesuit priest who asked to be released from his Jesuit vows, and he was a Jesuit in the highest order within the Vatican. And I want to look at some of the aspects of what a Jesuit was and is, and that point out the fact that our current Pope is actually a Jesuit as well. The Jesuits, or the Society of Jesus, was actually removed from most of Western Europe and their respective colonies beginning in 1759. Along with the abolition of the order by the Holy See, or the Vatican, 
1773. The Jesuits were continually expelled through multiple nations through the 1700s. In 1814, a subsequent pope, Pius XII, acted to restore the Society of Jesus to its previous provinces, and the Jesuits began to resume their work in those countries. The Jesuits clearly weren't making very many friends in Western Europe kicked out of the majority of the countries, and I want to read some quotes from some notable people about what they had to say about the Jesuit order. Napoleon Bonaparte, the Emperor of the French, said, quote, The Jesuits are a military organization, not a religious order. Their chief is a general of an army, not the mere father abbot of a monastery. And the aim of this organization is power, power in its most despotic exercise, absolute power, universal power, power to control the world by the violation of a single man. Jesuitism is the most absolute of despotisms, and at the same time, the greatest and most enormous of abuses. Marquise de Lafayette, a French statesman and general who served in the American Continental Army under the command of General George Washington during the American Revolutionary War, said, quote, It is my opinion that if the liberties of this country, the United States of America, are destroyed, it'll be by the subtlety of the Roman Catholic Jesuit priests for they are the most crafty, dangerous enemies to civil and religious liberty. They have instigated most of the wars of Europe." There's a long list of many other similar quotes like that from very prominent people about the Jesuit order, so it's no surprise why Malachi Martin decided to disavow himself from that. Now let's look at the Three Secrets of Fatima, and the third one that was not fully revealed to the public, but was revealed privately to Malachi Martin. The Three Secrets of Fatima are a series of apocalyptic visions and prophecies which are allegedly given to three young Portuguese children on May 13, 1917. The three children claim to be visited by the Virgin Mary six times between the months of May and October in 1917. This apparition of Mary and the secrets and prophecies that she revealed is now known as Our Lady of Fatima. The three secrets that she revealed was first visions of souls in hell telling the children of the importance of praying for people to lead them from going to hell. The second one was a prediction of the end of World War I and a prediction of the beginning of World War II, as well as a request to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In one of the alleged visitations from Mary, she said that two of the children were going to be taken and that one would be left for a while longer. Shockingly enough, two of the children died not long after this from the flu but the third child lived on quite a while longer. The third secret was revealed to that child who didn't feel she had the right to reveal it. The bishop that she was under in October of 1943 told her that she should write it down. She then wrote it down in an envelope and said that it wasn't supposed to be revealed until the year 1960 when, quote, it will appear clearer. Pope St. John XIII, who was the Pope in 1960 at the time, did not reveal the secret to the world. The text from the third secret was officially released by Pope John Paul II in the year 2000, but many people believe that the full letter and the full prophecy of the third secret was not revealed to the public. The third secret that was officially revealed to the public talked about martyrship truly and repentance and how a pope was marching to the top of a mountain and there were soldiers there who killed him and they killed many of the bishops and the lay people and many religious people and just talked about really repentance and persecution. Pope John Paul II thought this vision was maybe in reference to him and the assassination attempt that was on his life. But again, many people believe that the third secret was never fully revealed to the public. Malachi Martin, who knew the secret it was revealed to him, didn't live to the year 2000 to validate whether this secret was the fulfillment of it or not. But he did have a quote about the secret in which he said this, quote, because Fatima is a very apocalyptic message, it says that no matter what happens, there are going to be terrible wars, there are going to be diseases, whole nations are going to be wiped out, there are going to be three days of darkness, there are going to be epidemics that will wipe out whole nations overnight, parts of the earth will be washed away at sea, and violent tornadoes and storms. It's not a nice message at all. According to that, it doesn't seem like the full secret of the revelation of Fatima was revealed to the public, according to what Malachi Martin knows. Malachi Martin died in 1999 in his Manhattan apartment from an intracerebral hemorrhage four days after his 78th birthday. It was caused by a fall in his apartment. Malachi Martin, I believe, was a faithful man who believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I believe it's pretty interesting some of the things that he has to say about the Vatican and what he exposed. And just his life, that the fact that he disavowed himself from the Jesuits, I think really proves some 
character on his part. And it's just a really interesting story about the Vatican and these insiders at the Vatican. It'd be great if more would come out. While I don't agree with everything the Catholic Church does by any means, it's hard to agree with any organization run by people because people are not perfect. But I do know that there are people within the Catholic Church who are believers in the gospel and the truth of Jesus Christ. And I believe that Malachi Martin was one of those people. I believe he's shown it through his life of service and the different things he revealed and how we see these things coming more to light as time goes on, even after here we are 23 years later since his passing. So let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think about Malachi Martin's testimonies and his life? Interesting stuff. Thanks for watching and God bless.